Now, when the Toyota GT86 was released back in 2012, it quickly rose to fame. Critics fell in love with that car, its lightweight chassis, it had just enough power to do the job, but it wasn't over the top. Now here we are a few years down the line and we've got this Toyota GR86, the latest generation of Toyota sports cars, and today we're going to be taking this thing out on the road and seeing what it's all about. Now I don't know about you, but I think the GR86 has real road presence. I think altogether design is just a bit more grown up version of the GT86. There's quite a clear evolution from that car. The front end I think is nice and clean, it's not over the top. We've got some beautiful lines that come down over the bonnet here and over to the front bumper, which I think really complete the look on the front end. But proportionally, it's really perfect. It's just got that classic sports car look to it. For me, the rear of the GR86 is very much where the design of this car peaks. I absolutely love this kind of ducktail spoiler design built into the boot lid here. Again, the lights, just so simple. It's not overdone, really nice, elegant design. But one thing you might have noticed as well is these exhaust tips, because this is not standard. This car has a Cobra catback exhaust system, which sounds brilliant. So stay tuned for when we get this out on the road, because you're going to hear how brilliant this car sounds. So moving to the side profile of the GR86 then, I think one of the first things that stands out is this piece of styling down on the sill, which really juts out quite a bit and gives it a very nice road presence and overall kind of widens the track or the apparent track of the car. This vehicle is fitted with the 18 inch alloys. I think they're a brilliant design to be honest. I just wouldn't have them in black personally. I think this car would suit a lighter color on the wheels, but they are clad in Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires, which really is a fantastic tire compound. Works really well for the road, works really well all year round, and uh, I think really plays into the handling on this car. And also one thing I noticed on the roof, it's almost got a bit of a double bubble type shape to it. I had an E86 Z4 prior to the current car I have, and it also had that design, and I think it looks brilliant. It really kind of gives that race car kind of heritage to it. The interior of the GR86, I think, is where the clear difference is over the GT86. You can see there's been a lot of investment here to make this interior more up to scratch with competitors, because of course that was one of the big criticisms of the GT86. The materials, first of all, you notice feel a lot nicer. There's much less of that cheaper looking and feeling plastic. The seats are kind of clad in this really nice Alcantara effect type material. There are some plastics around, but overall they do not feel particularly cheap or inexpensive or just unpleasant. But one thing you do have to remember is this car is built to a price point and that's one of its key features. When released, it was actually under 30,000 pounds in the UK. I think now it's slightly more than that, around 32 and a half thousand, but in today's market, that is fantastic value for money when you think about how much a lot of these new cars are costing, particularly when it comes to the German stuff. We've got a brilliant infotainment system here, completely works absolutely fine. Heated seats, lots of nice kind of metal buttons, which really just help to raise the overall feel of the interior. And the steering wheel material is very nice too. The other thing about the GR86 is it is, of course, a 2 plus 2. So it has some pretty small seats in the back there, which, you know, would work for kids or whatever, but realistically, you're not going to use this as a, a four-person car on the regular. I think another thing, which I noticed straight away when I sat in the GR86 for the first time, is how supportive the seats are. You don't so much sit on them, but you rather sit in them, which is exactly what you want for a sports car. There's so much support in the side bolstering, both in the torso area and around the legs, which I really like, and they feel very nice and adjustable to, to enable you to get the perfect driving position, which of course is very important. Okay guys, so you join me out on the road behind the wheel of this GR86. It's honestly great to be behind the wheel of one of these cars. I've heard so many fantastic things since they've been released and customers have started receiving them. And I really want to say a special thanks to my uncle as well because he has lent us this car for the video, his prized possession, and we really appreciate that. So what's it like then out on the road? Well, it's really got that sports car feel to it. As you would imagine, it feels very, on edge, but in a good way, like it wants to be pushed. We're cruising along at some lower speeds right now, but I just want to kind of touch on, I guess, how usable this car actually is. There's plenty of boot space. I talked a bit about the interior before, and it's, it's a really 
pleasant and comfortable place to be. It feels very snug. I talked obviously a bit about the materials and the fact that this does feel reasonably upmarket and it, it feels good value for money, to be honest. So I'm really a big fan. The actual driving position is great. As I mentioned, the seats are very supportive, but they're nice and low. I just feel like I've got a nice, good position in the vehicle. I think the first thing you really notice though driving it is the sound. That exhaust, I think, has made a massive difference. I didn't actually drive in this car before it had the new exhaust on, but on startup, as you would have heard, it sounds brilliant and there's that real bassy tone to it. I guess a bit more on the engine then. It is a 2.4 litre flat four, so it's slightly increased in displacement over the GT86. That was a two litre unit. This car makes 231 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and it makes 184 foot-pounds of torque, and that's at 3,700 RPM. So a fair amount lower than the GT86. I think that was somewhere in the 6,000s. Just hear that engine now. Really revs out nicely. Yeah, fantastic sound, it really is. It revs out to 7,500 RPM, and with that power at the top end, it's really just begging to be revved out. But as I say, having the torque lower down in the RPMs does really make it usable around town, because you can be in the higher gears, and when you put your foot down, there is something there. The gearbox, again, this is purportedly vastly improved over the GT86, so shorter throw, better linkage, all that kind of stuff. It feels really good, actually very very positive feel to it you can quite comfortably know what gear you're in which is really reassuring when you're out on the road it makes a great sound as well it really does yeah so we're on some slightly better roads now and yeah i mean it's just it rides really nicely actually it's obviously a firm setup you would expect that the damping feels pretty good um yeah it just it feels very kind of sorted and well planted get the rev matches in there nicely as well and of course the heel and toes pedals are quite nicely set up for heel and toe downshifting actually the steering is electrically assisted you can certainly feel that but I don't think it particularly takes away from the driving experience if I'm being completely honest it feels fine and I can get some feedback through it I don't know if that's just with the camber setup or if there's something else there, but there is a bit of feedback and that's nice and not something you get with every single electronic steering rack. There's actually a Torsen limited slip differential on the rear axle as well, which is great. Really helps to kind of make the rear end feel positive out of corners and helps to put down the power a little bit better as well. I think that's something you could probably appreciate out on track. So we've got a McPherson strut on the front and then double wishbone suspension on the rear. So it's a reasonably sophisticated setup actually. Helps keep the car nice and balanced over the bumps and yeah, it just feels great. This is really where it's at home, you know say this car really just wants to be driven well I certainly feel like it rewards the driver yeah this is great fun it certainly has that quite classic flat four feel to it but it's not over the top it's not maybe quite as hard edged as you know a Subaru Impreza or something like that it's a bit more in line four and its soundtrack. So I think performance is perfectly adequate to be honest, 0 to 60 is 6.3 seconds, 
the top speed is 140 miles an hour in this manual version and I think just on that there is an automatic version if I were you don't get the automatic I don't see why you would if you're buying a car like this I've not heard anything good about it I think it comes with some additional toys like maybe adaptive cruise control things like that but honestly if you're buying a GR86 just get the manual you get the better performance anyway I think the 0 to 60 on the automatic is about half a second slower as well torsional rigidity is up as well about 50% over the GT86 so the whole chassis just feels a bit stiffer now I didn't drive the GT86 so I can't personally comment on that but reading stuff that other people have written about these cars I think that is a noticeable difference and I'm sure particularly out on track and things like that you would notice the additional rigidity in this chassis One of the key things with this car though, it has to be its weight. In this day and age, cars are getting so unbelievably heavy that having anything on the lower half of the one ton scale is just incredible to be honest. This car comes in at around 1270 kilos, so by modern standards is definitely a light car. And to be honest, I do think that is a light car by any measure. The fact that we've got something like this in 2023, it should really be appreciated. There's so many benefits to having a lower weight chassis. For one, the car just feels a lot more alive, but it also means you can just enjoy a slightly smaller engine. You know, this is naturally aspirated. How many cars are there these days that have naturally aspirated engines? It's almost a, com a thing completely of the past, yet you can really utilize that in a lightweight car like this. Of course, as well, it has a pretty good weight balance. I think it's 53% to the front, 47 to the rear, so near on perfect. And that really helps just tie into making the car feel and handle very well on these British B roads. Listen to that, fantastic sound. It's almost like the higher you get up the rev range, the more it delivers. Again, just a true characteristic of a proper NA engine. Of course, there's plenty of grip as well from those Michelin PS4 tires. It just gives you a lot of confidence really in the chassis. So yeah, overall, the driving experience, it's fantastic. If you want a sports car and you want a new sports car, definitely consider a GR86. It just offers so much. It's that true kind of back to basics ideology lightweight, small engine, high revving engine, manual gearbox, it's the perfect setup. It's kind of a sad story though with the GR86 because as you'll probably know, there's not that many going to be built. Production's only going to be lasting two years in Europe with the GR86, which is a real shame. And unfortunately it's been killed off by safety legislation. I think it's something to do with pedestrian safety, which is really unfortunate. So we've really just got to appreciate this car while it's with us. The initial allocation in the UK I think was about 430 cars which of course sold out very quickly and I believe they've all been delivered now. There was an additional allocation which came I think very recently, sort of late 2023. Again I hear that most of these have sold out but I think there are one or two brand new examples still at dealers plus of course the demo cards. So if you were after a brand new car there might still be some available. Having said that the used market definitely has some out there. And they weren't at absolutely ridiculous prices, to be honest. I think, unfortunately, in this day and age with a car like this, there's always that possibility that people are gonna buy them and just immediately flip them for a profit. And it can really kind of just inflate the used market. But with the GR86, it certainly looked like there were some good examples out there. And I think as well, we have to just touch on the whole price point thing, because it's amazing really that Toyota is selling this car for the low 30,000 pound range here in the UK. It's just completely unheard of these days. And car prices just seem to be getting higher and higher. And yet 32 and a half thousand for a new one. I mean, that's just fantastic for the package really. Proper back to basic sports car. So yeah, what's my final thoughts then? I've really enjoyed driving this car. Once again, thanks to my uncle for letting us borrow this. It's been fantastic to actually get out and see what all the hype is about, I suppose. I think if you're in the market for a sports car, 
this is a very, very good choice. I know you can go a lot higher at the price range if you want to do that, but you've got a question, do you need to do that? This is one of these cars that you can actually drive at eight, nine tenths, and you're not going ridiculous speeds or illegal speeds. Unfortunately, with a lot of these modern cars, they are so powerful and so fast that you can only extract a fraction of the performance on the public road. And then there's just that whole question of, well, what's the point then? So I think it's really worth just thinking twice about that and do you actually need all the additional power? Because I think there's a lot of enjoyment to be had out of a car like the GR86. So I think that pretty much concludes this video. Let me know what you think about the GR86. Perhaps you're an owner. If you've got any thoughts or insight, let me know in the comments below. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. That kind of thing helps us out massively and of course helps us to get access to more and more cars. We really appreciate that. But anyway, I think that's going to be all from me. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.